Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, today I want to talk about batteries in electric cars because there's a huge monumental amount of misinformation, disinformation, half truth and bold face lies out there that make it very difficult for anybody wanting to buy an EV with any confidence. In this video, I hope to dispel those myths so you can actually buy an EV without worrying about the stuff that, well, let's face it, things like the Daily Mail constantly bang on about, which isn't just bending the truth. It's completely wrong. One example of this is the nearly daily comment I get from people saying that you need to replace the batteries every two or three years. I mean, let's face it, sometimes talking to these people who hate electric cars for reasons I can't fathom, even though they've never even sat in one, let alone owned one, uh, it's, it's like talking to a flat earther and trying to persuade them that the earth isn't actually flat. Anyway, that's what this video is about, to try and point people in the right direction when these questions and comments come along. So if you're thinking about buying an EV and you're worried about the batteries, then, well, don't. And hopefully this video will allay some of those fears. Right, let's start with what's actually inside a battery electric car, because again, there's several things which I think people are unaware of. Uh, the first thing is that there isn't just a battery in a battery electric car. If you're thinking it's something like this, which is an iPhone battery, but a bigger version of it, it's not at all. There are many, many batteries in an electric car. For example, my Leaf outside, that's a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf, which is nearly four years old now, that has 192 cells in it. So it's not just one big battery, it's many batteries, which has significant advantages, which I'll kind of come to throughout this video. Another thing that's worth pointing out is that they are much more advanced than what people traditionally think of as batteries. So this, for example, is not the same as what you would get in an electric vehicle. They are far more advanced. Another thing that electric vehicles have over typical consumer items anyway, is a battery management system. Now this, uh, as it sounds, the BMS, is, its job is just to look after batteries. I'm not sure how much more clear it can be. Uh, I will give you one example of this uh, rather than all the examples of what it actually does. Uh, but this kind of gives you an idea of what the BMS does and why it's a good thing for battery longevity. Now we all pretty much know that completely depleting a battery doesn't do it any favors. They don't like to be completely run down. Uh, on the flip side, they don't want to be fully charged to 100% either. It can reduce their lifespan. So what a battery management system will do is stop that from happening. Let's again take my Leaf outside as an example. Nissan are a little bit naughty on this one because they advertise it as a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf. In reality though, it's about 27 and a half kilowatt hour of usable battery. And that's because they reserve kind of a, a buffer at the top of the battery and a buffer at the bottom of the battery to stop it being fully charged completely, to stop it being fully depleted. Uh, so for example, if I drive my Leaf till it stops, literally, so it's at 0%, it stops working, and the car says you're on 0%. In reality, that battery is actually about 4 or 5%. That's done to, to protect the battery from completely depleting itself, or batteries, should I say, uh, and, and it, it protects it, basically. It aids its longevity. And on the flip side, if I charge that up to full, 100%, the battery's not actually at 100%. It's probably 95, 96%. Now, some cars have bigger buffers than other, but ultimately that's just one example of many things that a BMS, a battery management system, does to, uh, to, to protect them so they last longer than things like this. Something else that they have, which again, aids longevity and protects them, but not all EVs have this, is thermal battery management. Now, my Leaf, for example, has no active thermal battery management whatsoever. Uh, other cars like uh, Teslas, for example, that most people are familiar with, they have full thermal battery management. Again, most people recognize that when a battery gets very, very cold, it uh, reduces, reduces its efficiency and can reduce its lifespan as well. And on the flip side, if it gets too hot, it will again reduce efficiency and lifespan. What the thermal battery management will do is if the battery pack gets too hot, it cools it down. And of course, if it gets too cold, it will heat it up. So it maintains a stable temperature range, again, to aid in the, the, the lifespan of the battery. As I said, not all EVs have that. Some just have battery cooling to stop them getting too hot. Uh, others have the full thing, and some, like my Leaf, don't have any active thermal battery management at all. 
Now, collectively, what I'm saying is once you factor in, you've got much more advanced batteries, you've got lots of them, not just one, you've got battery management systems and some have thermal battery management systems. What I'm saying is don't impose your experience of these things or even these things, iPhone batteries or phone batteries in general, uh, and think that's what it's like in an electric vehicle. Ignore these completely. What you think you know about batteries uh, in, in normal day-to-day -day life isn't what you will experience in an electric car. So that's something hopefully we've cleared up now. They are a different animal, our batteries in an EV, compared to laptops, phones, cameras, that sort of stuff. Now, let's get on to a question which is, again, very commonly asked, how long do batteries last in an electric car? But ultimately, it's one that is almost impossible to accurately answer. There are a gazillion of variables which affect the lifespan of anything, not just batteries, and you'd need more information to give someone an even vaguely accurate answer to that question. Put it this way, if I asked you, how long does a petrol engine last? Typically, the answer would be, well, which petrol engine? Are we talking about a Dacia Sandero engine here or a Mercedes E-Class engine? Are we talking about a car that's serviced properly or one that's abused and never serviced at all? Does it do lots of short journeys, lots of long journeys? Is it driven really harshly? Is it driven carefully? There's a gazillion variables that affect the lifespan of an engine and a battery car is no different. You get my point. It's, it's a very broad question that can only be very broadly answered, but I am going to attempt it. Now, what I'm going to try and do is give you two examples of cars that are sold right now, today in 2020. One at the lower end of the battery technology scale and one at the top end. So if we can see the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, then it'll give us an idea of where we're going. So for this, I'm going to pick a Nissan Leaf and a Tesla Model S. Just because they've both been out for quite a long time, the Leaf has uh, a less advanced system, should we say, of battery management, no thermal battery management at all, in terms of uh, active anyway. Uh, whereas the Tesla, that's pretty much regarded as, as the pinnacle of battery technology right now, how they look after their batteries. Um, so uh, that, that, that's the starting place. Let's look at what you will get roughly out of a Leaf and a Model S. Now, just quickly to answer the question of you need to replace your batteries every two or three years, I can debunk that immediately because, well, let's take the Nissan Leaf. My Nissan Leaf, for example, it's a 2016 30 kilowatt hour and that comes on the battery with a eight year, 100,000 mile warranty. Now, I know that manufacturers aren't stupid when it comes to money and they're not going to warranty something that needs replacing two or three times during that warranty period, which will ultimately end up costing them a fortune. Would they do that? Of course they wouldn't. Now, let me be clear. I've just said that you will get a seven or eight year warranty on all cars sold right now in the UK today, uh, depending on the manufacturer, some are seven, some are eight years. Uh, but that doesn't mean you need to replace the batteries after seven or eight years. This is another thing people I don't know, they just don't listen to what you say. Just like you wouldn't replace a petrol engine when its warranty ended, you don't replace the batteries in an EV when, we, when its warranty ends. In terms of the LEAF, Nissan guarantee a minimum state of health of 70% after that period of eight years or 100,000 miles. Now listen, look at my lips, minimum. Now again, Nissan aren't going to want to take chances on this and end up paying money out where they don't need to. So if they think it's going to be a minimum of 70% after that period, in reality, it will be at least 75% minimum. Now, if we look at 75% as a minimum, I would say that the top end of that scale would be about 85% after that period. So we've got 85% to 75%, which gives us a rough average of about 80% state of health on average for Nissan Leafs over eight years or 100,000 miles. Of course, that's what they call an average. Some will be higher, some will be lower. Now, let me just pause for a second and leave the Nissan Leaf at what we've just said. I, I will look at what happens post 100,000 miles, eight years in a minute, but now I want to look at the Tesla Model S and see what sort of battery uh, state of health we get after a similar period. Now, given it's two, three times as expensive as a Nissan Leaf, you would expect a much better state of health. Teslas, again, are kind of known for their longevity and looking after their batteries very well. Uh, and thankfully, because they have been out a long time, there's an awful lot of data out there. Now, to stop me having to make my own graphs and all sorts of stuff, I'm taking this for a, from a variety of sources. This comes from the very good website, Electrek. So this, for example, is uh, actual data 
of Tesla's Model S's and X's uh, over 250,000 kilometers. As you can see from this graph, the red line is the average of them all and all the dots are the individual cars. And what this basically tells us is that after 250,000 kilometers, you still got about 92% on average battery health. Battery degradation less than 10% after over 160,000 miles according to the latest data. Batteries are only gonna get better and better with age. Now this other graph here, again, it shows 250,000 kilometers and up the side you can see the battery going from 85 to 100% health. Uh, and you see there's a, there's a bit of a drop off at the beginning and then it kind of plateaus out. But over 100 and, what is it, 60,000 miles I think it was, you've still got well over 90% battery health. So even if we dumbed it down and said you only get 90% after that period, you can see there's a clear difference between a Tesla and a Nissan Leaf. I guess what you take from this is you get what you pay for. But after 100,000 miles, a Nissan Leaf is at about 80, maybe 82% in reality. I'm being a bit harsh in these figures. Um, whereas a Tesla, a Model S or an X, this thing will be probably at 90, 92%. So clearly it has much more advanced systems and that affects the lifespan, which is again why it's such a difficult question to answer. The first thing that you'd need to know, I guess, is what car are we talking about here? This graph from a very, very good website uh, called Geotab. They have a great blog, which gives you lots of details and, um, and reports about 6,000 electric vehicles, of very makes and models, uh, and their state of health and things like that. So it's a great place to get information for videos like this. Now you can see on the graph I'm about to show you, uh, this is the battery degradation of 2015 Leaf versus the 2015 Tesla Model S. You can see a clear difference there. They start off at 100% and the Leaf tails off at a faster rate than the Tesla. Obviously that's less than five years old because it's a 2015 car and we're only in 2020. This is why, again, it's very difficult to answer the, this question because cars haven't really been out long enough to give us a definitive answer. And that leads us to another thing which is different with EVs compared to a petrol engine car. Typically with a petrol engine, although it does lose efficiency, uh, you will end up with a, a working car, a working car, working car, and then it just stops working. There'll be a, a, a component failure, which means that engine just stops, it's dead or it's uneconomical to repair. That's what typically happens. Obviously, some people repair them, some people can do it themselves, they're the exceptions, but generally speaking, it gets to a point with an old car, we've all had it, where something goes and you think, it's not worth repairing. So there's a definitive end point with a petrol engine car there, where you can say it will last roughly this long before a major component failure. With an EV, concerning the batteries, then that's a little bit more difficult because you don't get kind of like a working curve and then it just stops, you get just degradation, 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 degradation. Of course, motors and things can, can fail, but we're talking about batteries now. So I guess it's a case of how you class where the end point is, where it stops being usable. Let's take somebody that needs 100 miles of range for their life. They say, oh, 100 miles is more than enough for me. And they end up getting a car with a 200 mile range. They could have 50% battery degradation before it affects their life, before it becomes unusable. The person with the 200 mile range car that's now only got a 100 mile range because of the 50% degradation, wouldn't just get rid of it, they would sell it to someone that, oh, well, yeah, 100 miles is more than enough for me, I only need 50 miles. So you get my point, it's very difficult to, to determine where uh, an EV stops being usable or useful, because what might be unusable to you or me might be useful for someone else. Obviously, because they haven't been out long enough, it's very difficult to say this, but if someone put a gun to my head and say, I want you to give me a long-term projection for a Leaf, the one you've done in this video, and a Model S, uh, how long are they gonna last? Well, um, I would probably predict a 2015 Leaf in this circumstance, I reckon you would hit that 60% degradation point at about 175 to 200,000 miles. That's, that's my guesstimate. Time will tell. Uh, in terms of age, because obviously some people do more miles than others, then I reckon between 10 and 12 years before the leaf hits that point. We're trying to predict the future, and that's quite difficult. Uh, but given the 80-ish percent likelihood after 100,000 miles or eight years, I would say that, that that's about right for me, for something like a Nissan Leaf. So 175 to 200,000 miles, again, on average, some will be more than that, some will be less than that. 
I think I'm going to go with that one and the same for the years, 10 to 12 years. Now when we look at the Tesla Model S, well, there's uh, there's a million examples of high milers out there for you. I could have picked tons. Uh, however, what I would probably say with 100% certainty is that in terms of batteries alone, a Tesla's battery will outlast the car considerably. There's tons of people with hundreds of thousands of miles on there. I think the guy with the highest mileage Tesla at the moment has got 550,000 miles on it. And that's on the original battery. Not sure about motors, but this is about batteries. It's definitely fair to say that the batteries will, should never be a concern in something like a Tesla. In a Leaf, depending on how old it is when you get it or how, old, how long you keep your cars, potentially it could be. But I think 175 to 200,000 miles out of a car isn't too bad. And again, it doesn't stop working. It just means it's not got as much range. But the last time I found what the average lifespan of a typical car, petrol car was, the RAC said it was about 12, 12 and a half years. Um, obviously, some of those will last a year before they get smashed and totaled. Some of them will last 20 years. And that's how you end up with an average. Um, so I think what we can take from this is that if you buy a, a lower end priced electric vehicle, it will clearly not last as long as a higher end electric vehicle. It, it, you get what you pay for in life, I suppose. Um, so that, that's it. I'm just going to leave them statistics out there and, and leave it up to you whether you think that's acceptable or not. Now, let's get on to what if you want to repair those batteries? What if you think, you know what, it's got 60% degradation now. I want to keep my car and just get the batteries back up to health. This is something, again, people often get. The amount of times people used to tell me with my old Leaf, the 24 kilo hour Leaf, which is a much smaller battery, that it's going to cost me £5,000 to replace the batteries. Uh, I wish I had a penny for every time I got one of those comments anyway. Ultimately, this is something that it, it, will, it is not true. Uh, and, and it's for this reason. Let me give you another example. Let's say you've got a, an old car, a 15-year-old Volkswagen Golf, and the engine's just gone. You need a new engine. What won't happen is, hello, Mr. Volkswagen. Yes, my engine's gone on my Volkswagen uh, Golf GTI. It's 15 years old. So could you price me up a brand new engine, please, at full retail price? See, that doesn't happen, does it? People do not replace an old engine that's gone in the real world with a brand new one from the dealer. What typically happens, and we've all had it, is that you will look for a, a used engine or maybe a refurbished engine and get it back up and running that way. I can't think of a single person, although I'm sure there is one out there, no doubt in the comment section, that has bought a brand new engine from a main dealer because their engine has gone. At least when it's well out of warranty and it's an old car anyway. And the same would be said for an electric vehicle. For one, you already know there's many batteries, not just one. So you'd only replace the cells that needed replacing. So if 40% of the cells had a fault, you would replace 40% of the battery, not the whole battery pack. So nobody is going to have a, an old electric vehicle and then buy a full retail price battery pack from a dealer and replace the whole battery even though only half of it needs replacing. What in reality will happen and happens now is that they will go to a third party or an independent battery specialist. There are many sprouting up all over the country right now uh, and they will take your old battery out and put a refurbished battery in its place, at the whole battery pack I mean. They will then probably refurbish your battery pack and someone else will get that. So in reality, it doesn't happen. People will not go to Nissan with a 15-year-old Nissan Leaf and say, here you go, repair, repair it for me. Charge me what you want. Let's face it, someone at the Daily Mail who does this sort of article will ring up Nissan and say, how much is a brand new battery, even though in 15 years it'll be a lot cheaper. Um, how much is a new battery? Oh, it's £5,000 for that. Is it? Ooh, well, I'll put that in my article. It doesn't make sense any more than finding a brand new price for a Golf GTI's engine would make sense in saying that's what you have to spend after 10 or 15 years of owning a Golf GTI. So you get what I'm saying here, a replacement wouldn't be the whole battery, it'd be just the parts that needed it, and you, you wouldn't typically go to a main dealer, not once they get to that age anyway. It should also be noted that looking at a 10 year old electric car today isn't indicative of what a car today will look like in 10 years time. Battery technology is moving on. I mean, it's getting advanced year on year on year. So a car today will be more, will last longer and more advanced than the car from 10 years ago, of course. Just like a petrol engine gets more efficient, the newer they get, the better they get designed. The same can be said with electric vehicles. So when we get to you know 15, 20 years from now, 
who knows where we'll be at if solid state batteries become a thing and lots of uh, people out there think it will do there's even some manufacturers claiming they've cracked it already that will, that will completely change everything but that's for another video um so anyway hopefully this has explained a bit more about electric vehicle batteries in a non-technical sense because at the end of the day i am not a battery specialist i am not an engineer um so uh, so take everything with a pinch of salt on youtube please do especially if it's in mainstream media as well but i've tried to back anything i've said up here with at least some evidence um and i would I, I'm, I'm confident in in the assumptions i've made in here that they are correct now of course if i have got anything wrong I'm sure people have told me in the comments 14 million times already. Uh, so I apologise for that, but fingers crossed I haven't. Um, so yes, has this laid your fears? Has it made you think, well, actually, yeah, I might, I might look into battery cars now. I, I did think they'd only last two or three years, but now I know better. Has, has it made you just think, well, actually, no, no, I'm still not convinced. Uh, let me know. That's what the comments are for, but just be polite. That's all I ask. I don't mind questions. I don't mind opposing opinions as long as you back it up in some way. Just saying electric cars are crap and unless I can drive 800 miles on a single charge I'm not interested, that doesn't help anyone does it? I mean, I love that comment. I, unless I can do 800 miles I'm not, I don't want one. Well, it, it, quite often people drive from uh, Land's End to John O'Groats for a 15, 18 hour drive without stopping at all. That happens all the time doesn't it? Right, as always thank you for watching. Please do subscribe, it does help and if you want to buy some merch go to lovelymerch.com forward slash evm uh, everything will be in the description below thank you for watching and i will see you soon